Thanks for tuning in today. And if you're an existing subscriber, thank you again for coming back. And if you're somebody new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell if you'd like to get more content like this. Now, today is gonna to be a little bit different. I'm not gonna be doing one of my how-to installations. Instead, I'm gonna be talking about one of the products that I put on the vehicle, and this happens to be the Camberg Racing Upper Control Arm. Now, this is a product I've been running that I got as a prototype, having known Jerry Zayden, the owner of Camberg Racing, for some time now. Gosh, I think it's been close to about 20 years, and from everything from racing to the offerings he's made on a lot of the vehicles that we've brought to SEMA or other project cars we've made for the industry. Uh, that being said, uh, we had an opportunity to see if we can expand their existing coverage, which they do have for the standard Colorado and Canyon, into the ZR2 platform. And what we wanted to do was offer something a little bit different, and we came up with the kind of heavy-duty and fully adjustable upper control arm. And as you'll see in the discussion here, Jerry was out at KOH, and I ran into him, and we just started talking about what the different offering was for the ZR2 platform, how I used it, and really how it benefits everything that goes into making a new product line for a vehicle that they had not yet expanded into. So we've got a little video following this. Uh, take a look and enjoy. One of the really cool things about coming out to King of the Hammers, the people you run into. So Richard's one of our longtime friends, been working with Magnaflow since the beginning of all of our truck racing. And what's really fun uh, with Richard is Richard, you probably recognize him from all the overhaul and shows and all the TV that's been involved with Magnaflow. But you're a hot rod guy, more of a Corvette dude, you like the speed, and you're finally in a truck. Yeah, actually, it's kind of funny. I started in a truck in high school, and then the addiction to speed and whatnot kind of pushed me towards a performance car. And uh, up until recently, you know, it's just been something that's uh, I've wanted to try something. I've watched all the fun you guys have had as you've gone from a very core uh, race focused company to now really you can appreciate Camberg on anything. I mean, I'm running Camberg on my truck. Uh, it gives me the ability to come out here and do things that stock truck really can't do. Uh, and at the same time, uh, it, it enables what I can do and have enough fun to go kind of mimic what you guys can really do on the race course uh, and know I'm going to get home without, you know, broken parts. We've done a lot of trips around the West Coast, like we've been Grand Canyon, North Rim, South Rim, uh, all through Utah, Northern California, the coasts, everywhere. And Richard's been on a few of our trips now and he's really embracing the off-road lifestyle, especially like, you know, the overloading lifestyle that you guys all know as overlanding. But uh, he built out this really cool truck uh, it's called the Bison, and uh, explain what this platform is and why our upper arms help so much. Well, one of the things that we've looked at with this vehicle and building it out, it's kind of like our test platform that we wanted to do in building our exhaust parts for this segment. Uh, but there are a lot of things that the stock field does very, very well. It's a ZR2, which is one of GM Performance's up-modeled kind of Colorado. So from factory, it's got already a wider stance, a kind of a mid-travel, you would call it, uh, with an aftermarket shock setup and a wider rear diff and front lockers, rear lockers. So it's pretty capable uh, until you start dumping all the extra weight in the back. And that's a big part of what this experience was. It was not just going fast in the dirt, but getting out to where we can stay and enjoy what, where we get it. As a destination, cook, be friends, drink over a campfire and whatnot. Uh, but we really made the truck almost I'd hate to say incapable, but it's definitely more difficult to handle all the weight and still be that performance runner. So one of the big problems with the front suspension is geometry. Colorados have never been known, and GM in general, for having great geometry for off-road. And of course, trying to stuff big tires under it as well. It's a lot more load on all the suspension parts. And that upper control arm, even from GM, has an upgrade available from the factory. So it's sort of a weak point, and it really doesn't give you the ability to uh, move the suspension around so that you can actually fit the larger tire combos and have that same kind of strength and increased performance. And really uh, moving from what uh, Camberg has done with the standard Colorado to what they now have with the longer upper control arm for the ZR2, I can confidently go and say, I can set up my camber, my caster, so that I can get the driving experience I want and not rely upon GM's kind of quirky suspension that was designed for a truck that was primarily for fleet use on the street. So it's been very cool to have a vehicle now that I can dial in to what I want to do in the dirt and still have good driving manners as well. 
So what we did for this truck here is we made the upper control arms with heim joint inner pivots, inch and a quarter uniball up on the top. And the reason why we do those heim joint pivots, it's not so you adjust it on the vehicle, it's that we have different setups. So you have the factory alignment cam still, and when those are done properly and tightened properly, they're just fine. But what we do with the upper arm is for someone that wants something more out of it, you could adjust more caster into it or take some caster out of it depending on the ride height you set up. We also pivoted on a heim joint upper pivot, and by doing that, it's a lot more firm to the frame. There's not these rubber bushings that are super flexy. So imagine you hit the brakes and everything's kind of bending back under that. So with this, it just stiffens everything up in a really good way, gives you a lot more feel for turning and handling, and then if you add more caster, really helps return to center a lot better, especially when you have a lot more weight in your vehicle. So it's really important the difference when you do spend time off-road versus 100% on the street. On the street, you're just grocery getting, let's call it that. When you're hitting the dirt, caster, negative camber, these all help tremendously with handling when you're in the dirt. So that's why we do this, and it's awesome to have someone like Richard, who's you know in the A-plus echelon of the aftermarket automotive world. If you go to SEMA, you know who Richard is. If you watch these TV shows, you know Richard is. He's had his hands on every high-end build from the the most elite hot rods, race cars, everything out there. That's what Richard does. So Richard, tell him uh, where to follow you. Well, you can find me at Oxidizer, O-X-I-D-I-Z-R on IG. Um, I try to put together some of my how-to stuff on my channel, which is Exhausting Life. But of course, everything I do in all the world that I get to deal with the people such as Jerry, you're gonna find us at magnaflow.com. Awesome guys, thank you.